Hello everyone, Rowan here. Today I have a pick a pile tarot reading for the collective for us to enjoy. Uh, I've got three piles of cards here and each one has a stone with them and you, the audience member, uh, you will based on either the aesthetics or the energy from each of these decks and their associated stones, uh, you are able to pick which one calls to you and then go to the timestamps uh, down below to listen to the reading that is associated with that deck and stone. Uh, so today I've got for pile number one, we have a pink opal. And the deck for that stone is the Zeke's Arcana. For pile number two, we have a beautiful hunk of jade. And the Tattoo Tarot ink and intuition. And for pile number three, we have some howlite. And the phantasma tarot. So go ahead and with me we're going to do some quick, well I say quick, we're going to do some deep slow breaths together and then you'll be able to choose which deck most speaks to you. So before we make our choices, I would like everybody to go ahead and take three big breaths in the nose and out the mouth and we're going to do it together, okay? So let's do one. and hope and release excellent everyone so go ahead and pick the deck that most speaks to you. Go to the timestamp listed down below and I will see you there for your reading. Hello, hello, my pile number one. You're here because you have either chosen the pink opal, oh, excuse me, the pink opal, or the cards associated, the Zeke's Arcana. So today we're going to take a look and see what is, uh, what messages are there from spirit for you, from source, from the universe, from God, if you will, um, what is needed to be known, what messages does my pile number one need to hear from the universe. I'm going to draw three tarot cards, and then I've got two oracle decks that we'll be using to uh, specify as well. So if I could please get three cards for my pile number one. Okay. I've got a jumper. Two more cards for my pile number one, please. Oh, I guess we're doing three more cards then. Okay. All right. 
we get the Page of Coins, the King of Coins, Temperance, and the Ace of Coins. Okay, pile number one. Oh, wow. Um, so right away, I'm definitely seeing that there is something going on in your life that has to do with the physical world and you are being called to take control. I'm thinking that there's a new opportunity that's opening up for you, a new world that's going to be at your discretion, your disposal. Um, this could be in the form of a new job. This could be in the form of being accepted into school. This could be in the form of um, getting into uh, a club that is very important to you, um, maybe Maybe you are uh, getting into the position of uh, in some volunteer work uh, and you've got some uh, responsibility that's being given to you uh, but no matter what it is there's something in the physical world um, it, it could also even be a new health situation um, perhaps something in your life has changed recently with regards to your health whether that's getting better or getting worse um, you could be facing a situation where you are dealing with a body that behaves in ways that it used to not um, or uh, something along those lines. So whatever it is, this new world is being opened up to you. You are a student in it. You are the ultimate student in this new world. So I'm getting that this opportunity that's being presented to you is one where you are being called to, within yourself, find the balance between the parts of you that want to take control and the parts of you that need to know that you're still in a at a beginner stage. You still need to have that learner's mind with everything that you do, but I'm also getting the feeling that that perhaps sooner than you're ready for, you are going to be called to step up and lead in this situation. Now, I don't know if you want to be a leader here. Maybe the people around you, like let's say, let's say this does have to do with a new job. Um, maybe this company or this situation that you've gotten yourself into uh, or that is being given to you, I should say, um, you might not necessarily feel like it's, like it's something where you want to be here long term, um, but you do have the ability to take control and it's very possible control is going to be given to you whether you like it or not. Um, I'm also getting that if this is a health situation where your health has suddenly changed, either for the better or for the worse, um, you need to be the one who is like on the one hand, you need to be open to learning about this new situation, whether that's learning what recovery is going to look like for you or whether that's um, learning about what illness is going to look like for you. But you also need to be the one who speaks up on your own behalf. Uh, nobody else is going to be supporting you through this quite the same way that you support yourself. And so if you're not telling the doctors, no, you need to listen to me, then you are doing yourself a disservice. But you really need to find the interior balance between these things. You really need to make sure that you're keeping yourself um, grounded, keeping yourself humble, but also keeping hope, keeping uh, the future in mind. Um, there are a lot of factors that are at play here, and it's going to be something that no matter what makes you feel out of your own depth. You're going to feel like you don't have the tools that you need. You're going to feel like you don't have the knowledge that you need. You might even feel like you don't have the team of support that you need in order to get done whatever new thing is ahead of you, but you do. It's just a matter of finding the balance between yourself and whoever you might be working with. Um, this idea of temperance is going to be very important. Uh, I would like to get some additional information as to uh, what this may look like in your life. How does temperance, and I'm going to pull an oracle card for that, how does temperance impact the situation? express. Okay, so you need to be temperate in the way that you communicate with others. You need to make sure that you're not letting too much emotion come through, even though it's a scary time for you. You are being called to be a leader while you're still a student. You're, you're unfortunately, like you're being trial by fired here. Like they are throwing you in before you have the opportunity to truly get your feet underneath you. And that's going to make it really easy for you to come across as rude, quite frankly, um, come across as barreling over people if you're not careful. Um, and on the flip side of that, if you're not really the type of aggressive person to be that way when you get out of your depth, 
or what feels like out of your depth, I should say, because ultimately I want to remind you that you can do this. Like we're getting, there's, there's nothing here that indicates that you do not have the capabilities to handle whatever life is throwing at you right now. However, you need to be careful how you communicate about it. If you are too passive, nobody's going to listen to you. If you are too aggressive, nobody is going to listen to you. Once again, it comes back to this idea of being the ruler over your own domain and being the one who has to pursue your own abundance, your own worldly, um, not necessarily abundance in a financial way, but like whether that's health, project success, whether that's schooling, whatever it is, you have to pursue that and you have to be careful about how you communicate that pursuit to those around you so that they are un truly understanding of what you're attempting to do. Now let's get another card from the Modern Nirvana Oracle. I'd like to see some advice, please. What is some advice for this uh, situation that pile number one finds themselves in? If we could please get some advice as to uh, what their next steps should be, or perhaps some advice about who they should be connecting with. Let's just pull this one here. Gratitude. Okay, so this is ultimately something that is going to be beneficial to you. We've, we've been over that. Whether it is something that succeeds in the traditional sense of the word or something that succeeds by teaching you lessons, whether it is showing gratitude for the doctors and the nurses who have helped you to get better, the family members who have supported you along this journey, uh, or perhaps it's gratitude to the doctors and nurses who are going to help you get better and the family who's going to support you along this journey. Um, but there is a necessity to perhaps even quite literally express your gratitude to the people who do support you. Um, this isn't something you should keep in your head. This is something that needs to be shared. Um, this this gratitude, we're getting a lot of pentacles here. And so this idea of gratitude needs to be made manifest. It's not enough to leave it in the airspace. It's not enough to leave it in the watery emotional space. It's not enough to leave it in your heart of passions. This needs to be made tangible. So express your gratitude to everyone who supports you in your role as leadership. And it's not even going to feel like you're leading. If you keep a learner's mind in this uh, new world that has been opened up to you, if you can keep this learner's mind, even as you're in control of other people, if you can thank them when they do something right, if you can communicate with them in a healthy way and make sure that you, what you need is properly being communicated, then you're going to be able to work your way through whatever this situation is. It might not always be pretty, but you're going to get through it. And, um, you need to keep your emotions in check with this. You need to keep your ego in check with this. And uh, you need to stay humble and you need to stay open to new, um, <clears throat> like you're, whether you want it or not, you're in a new situation. You need to stay open to new understandings about that situation. Okay, so pile one, pile number one, before I let you go, I just want to go through each card one more time to make sure that I have gotten all of the messages that Spirit needs me to get. Um, so we've got the page of coins here. Uh, so this idea of <clears throat> book smarts, this idea of uh, learning from the people and the situations that came before you, this idea of being dedicated to doing the work necessary to move forward uh, along your journey of knowledge. Then we've got the King of Coins, which is very much so about ruling over your own domain um, with an air of abundance. So this king is not stingy. This king is not uh, participating in some sort of... Um, austerity program. This is a king of giving, a king of social situations and, uh, not social situations, excuse me, of social structure. Um, a king of um, supporting his people, or in this case, your body, um, your, your, your workers who might be below you, your students who might be working on this, your fellow students who might be working on this project with you. 
Um, so we have this idea of giving abundantly and of learning abundantly. Um, so these two really do go together being the first two that we drew. So I get the idea that this is either something that you're going to be forced into or something that you yourself are going to need to tap into. Then we come along to the temperance card. Uh, the temperance card is all about moderation within yourself. Um, it's about, uh, first of all, being able to make sure that you are not putting too much energy into any one area of your life and you're able to balance that all out. But it's also about um, inner alchemy. It's about being able to pursue the adjustments and transformations that are necessary within the self in order to handle whatever situations might be in front of you. And then we have the Ace of Coins, which lets me know that this is a new world that's being opened up to you. Um, that could be a world of jobs. It could be a world of projects. It could be a world of school. It could be a world of health. Um, but whatever it is, you are finding yourself in a new world, whether you like it or not. And uh, down here, we get to our advice cards. We get this idea of expressing gratitude. I really do think that these two tie together. Um, I don't think the gratitude, like again, we are we're looking at a lot of coins here, uh, a lot of earthly things. This gratitude does not need to stay with in the self it needs to be expressed it needs to be shared with those around you who create the support structure who work for you with you alongside you um, who teach you who mentor you uh, make sure that you are not only feeling the gratitude but sharing it with them as well uh, be careful in your communications with people around you because that is how you learn and that is how you rule and um, that's that's a very important overall message here is to be careful in how you're communicating with the people around you in order to get the best results. This isn't this isn't just about communicating for the sake of communicating. This is about communicating for the sake of manifestation. So if you want whatever end goal to this situation that you are pursuing to actually come into fruition, you're going to have to lean on other people and um, show gratitude. Now, that could also look like showing gratitude spiritually. So do make sure that you spend some time um, feeling the gratitude, not just expressing it. Uh, but you want to feel it and then make it tangible in the world around you. Okay. Uh, so that is your reading pile number one. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope this wasn't too vague. I just want to make sure that all of the people who are getting this reading, um, it, it, I'm, I'm speaking for a lot of people right now, so I need to make sure that it's vague enough to apply to everyone that it applies to. So uh, thank you so much, pile number one. If you feel like you had any messages that were, like let's say you've also felt drawn to one of the other piles, feel free to go ahead and jump to that part of the video as well. Uh, or if not, I will see you next time. Mwah! I love you, bye. All right, pile number two. Hello, hello. So if you chose the jade or the tarot deck, uh, the tattoo tarot ink and intuition, uh, then you are pile number two and that's you're here for your reading. Uh, so let's go ahead and give these cards a shuffle. So what I'm asking is just a general, what messages does pile number two need to receive from spirit, from the universe? Um, I'm looking to pull three cards for pile number two uh, for messages that are relevant to them. Uh, this could be about any aspect of pile number two's life, um, just anything that pile number two needs to know. Let's just get some general messages, some general guidance, perhaps what's coming up, what has transpired that needs uh, addressing. Uh, let's get some direction perhaps for pile number two. If I could please get three cards for my pile number two. Great. 
So, Queen of Coins, the World, and the Two of Wands. Okay. So I'm getting the idea that you're finding yourself in a situation where you have to physically support another person and um, it is keeping you from being able to sort of do what you want to do because you're in a position of responsibility that uh, is perhaps um, not one that you want to be in long term. There is a a way to get what you want while also continuing to materially and physically support the person in your life that needs that support right now. Um, so the two of wands tells me that you need to go back to planning. Um, something here needs to be readdressed. Um, something here needs to be reassessed. And I'm also getting the vibe that this is super important. Like the thing that you are currently doing, the help that you are currently providing, even though it's keeping you from being able to do what you want to do right now, it's going to, in the long term, fundamentally impact you as a person to the extent that this is going to, in many ways, set the stage for your future. Um, it is going to give you like what the generosity that you are offering somebody in need now will come back to you whether that's in the form of direct generosity from another person or in the form of the universe giving you uh, what you have been working towards. Um, but you need to make some plans for how to make this more sustainable because it's not right now. Um, you are giving too much of yourself, perhaps. Uh, you are giving too much of your wallet, perhaps. And you and the person that you're trying to help need to reassess how this is going to look moving forward. I don't want you to leave them behind. Okay, I don't want you to stop offering the support, the um, the the nurturing that this other person or situation needs. Um, I want you to continue to be in that position of nurturer, supporter, uh, with regards to perhaps food, money, lodging. Um, perhaps you're assisting them uh, by helping them pay for their medications. Perhaps you're assisting them uh, by driving them to and from places uh, that they need to go. Perhaps you're assisting them by helping them pay uh, a bill every month. Um, I don't know what it is, but the help that you are giving someone else right now is going to both keep you from what you want to do in the current tense and give you the ability to do what you want to do in the future tense. So this is definitely a situation where you you really should be careful to tread, um, not lightly necessarily, but with purpose. Tread with purpose, let me put it that way. Uh, I want to go ahead and pull an oracle card uh, to get some clarity on um, mm -hmm. what exactly it is that... Uh, I, I want to know more about how the world card factors into this because I'm getting it like to me it's coming across as both upside down and right side up um, and I would like to know how this and this factor into this with a little bit more clarity so let's see here oh yep yep okay we got the support card uh the whole deck is upside down so let's ignore that that's upside down and just put it right side up um we got the support card here so once again i'm really getting this idea that what you are doing for this other person is going to come back to you perhaps even from them themselves um so your support of them at this time is going to allow them to support you in the future when you need it this could be a partner this could be a family member this could be a friend um this could be a co-worker this could be a random person that you have been assigned to through some program such as big brother or anything like that um or brothers and sisters of america or whatever that that program is called I don't know they had it at my high school um but uh something here is like your support is necessary now and in the future um so you need to make sure that you're giving that support so that it is there when you need it as well um I would also like to draw a card from one of my other decks uh, to get some clarity on how the planning can best be achieved um because I know that just saying plan better isn't particularly helpful advice. So let's turn to the uh, Untamed Elemental to get some advice about that. All 
right, so for pile number two, what do they need to keep in mind when they are planning how best to handle this situation of support? Sage. All right, so I'm going to go into the guidebook for this particular deck. Um, I believe Sage has to do with, uh, in this deck, it does have to do with something that isn't uh, obvious to me. So let me go into the guidebook and get some more clarity. But what I'm getting here is this idea of this being a... Um, an almost holy thing that you're doing. Um, perhaps this is a charity work that you're doing through, like I said, some sort of organization, uh, or perhaps this is um, a uh, something that you're doing through a church. Um, this could also be something that is just really healing. Maybe you're giving somebody else the support that you never got that you needed. Um, so whatever it is, I my initial... Um, intuitive read of this age is that it is about uh that it's about the the sacredness of of what is transpiring and perhaps what it means is that when you um like that that's the first thing that came across to me for sage with sacredness um keep in mind that like while you're planning don't be flippant flippant with it uh take it seriously and then the book says that Sage, uh, it gives the, um, the keyword purification and the uh, further keywords clear, harmonious, and grounded with an imbalanced uh, list of keywords, depressed, chaotic, conflicting energies that create confusion. So that line there, the conflicting energies that create confusion, that's making me think that perhaps in some ways you think that you are always going to be on the hook for this other person and you're afraid to give too much uh, or you're afraid that you're giving too much because they're going to continue to suckle at the teat, if you will. Um, but this tells me that if you just take some time to plan your next steps carefully and really perhaps balance budgets or uh, reassess the situation with the other party um, in order to help them to figure out uh, where your service can better be provided with less intensity. Uh, that's a possibility. Um, but something in this situation needs to be cleaned out. And that doesn't mean that it needs to be left behind, but it does need, mean that it needs to be reassessed and um, uh, tidied up. Perhaps you quite literally are helping this person to clean their house. Perhaps they're a hoarder and uh, perhaps or perhaps they're disorganized and they just need somebody to come in and help them get the order to their surroundings that is necessary. Um, that would also really tie in um, with the it would really tie in with the Queen of uh, Coins energy over here, this idea of being the one who keeps the castle uh, in its physical, cleanly state. Um, so something here needs to be purified. Uh, I'm thinking that the purification needs to happen in the way y'all are ass assessing what needs the help put to it. Um, so like, let's say they think that they need rides. You think that they need to take the bus. The solution might be that some days they have to take the bus. Some days they have to get a ride from you, but it could also be that they have to find somebody else who gives them a ride so that you can assist them by perhaps paying for their ride share instead because you've got the money, but not the time or the flip side of that. You're currently paying for their Ubers. Um, maybe you could assist them with getting their car into working order so that they don't have have to Uber anymore and you no longer have to pay for it. So maybe instead of paying for the Uber, you start paying for parts and labor. Um, or it could be a situation where you are buying them food uh, constantly, but what they really need is a clean kitchen so that they don't have to eat out um, and so that they can work, uh, do their own work. Whatever it is, you need to help them with purification and um, continue to offer that support. I don't, it, it's getting to a point where you're going to leave them behind if y'all don't reassess and figure out how to do it properly, okay? Um, there, 
the overall message let's go back let's go back through the cards and just do, 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 do it real quick okay so the queen of coins to me very much so speaks to this nurturing energy um like she really rivals the queen of coins to me really rivals the empress with regards to abundance creativity and um like physical manifestation uh but in this reading what i really got from her was this idea of assisting those um below her in means um so uh then we move along to the world card indicating that right now the world is not open to either of you uh but it can be um like i'm reading this card this way to this way like i very much so get a dynamic feeling from this like right now y'all are cutting yourself off from a uh, union with your higher purpose but if y'all can we move along to the two of wands if y'all can reassess plan um see how best to move forward in this situation uh with support with this um this what's the word um almost community outreach that you're doing for this person. I don't want to say charity. That's the wrong word. Um, but whatever it is that you're doing to assist them needs to be um, brought back to the drawing board, so to speak. And then we come down here uh, to the support idea, which tells me like getting this from the queen and then getting it here, it just verifies to me that it's about the support that you give and the support that you're going to receive in the future. And then this idea of purification here says that something in what you're planning needs to be gotten rid of or changed so that the overall goal can be reached. Because right now the way that y'all are trying to reach the goal of self-sufficiency Mm-mm, mm-mm, y'all can't see it, but I'm shaking my head. Um, the the current way that you're doing it isn't going to be successful. Um, so pile number two, that is your reading. If you have uh, any um, questions or concerns, uh, feel free to listen to some of the other readings. Maybe there are additional messages for you there. Um, if this did not resonate with you, uh, then please try some of the other readings, see if they suit you. Um, and if it did, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining me, pile number two. Mwah! Thank you. I love you. Bye. All right. Hello, hello. Pile number three. Uh, you are here because you have chosen either the Howlite or you have simply chosen the Phantasma Tarot. So today we're going to be doing a three card reading just to get some standard, non-specific, whatever messages the universe may have in store for you kind of thing. Uh, so any messages that need to come through from source, from spirit, uh, from the universe, from God, whatever it is that you believe in, let's get those messages for my pile number three. So what does pile number three need to know? What do I need to tell pile number three? Let's get three cards for our pile number three. General guidance, information, knowledge, support for pile number three. Perfect. Oh, not perfect. I just stepped on <laughs> I bent the card while retrieving it. Whoops. That's just me. All right. So let's see. What messages does the tarot have for my pile number three? The Fool, Two of Cups, and the mentor upside down. Interesting. So I don't read with reversals uh, in that I do not shuffle them into my decks with purpose. Um, however, uh, when one shows up like that, when it's a flyer and it ends up upside down, or if it accidentally gets in the deck, um, I do take into account that it appeared upside down in the reading and I tend to read more of its shadow aspects here. So I get the feeling that you are currently embarking on a new relationship and it is of the kind that perhaps either you're not ready for or you've never been in before or perhaps both. 
Um, it, this could be that you've recently gotten out of a bad previous relationship and you're pivoting a little bit too quickly to the new one. Uh, this could also be that um, you simply have never had a relationship this deep before and you don't know what steps to take to make sure that you uh, give it the energy that it needs and properly um, tend to it. Um, and I'm also getting the feeling here that in this situation, you don't have any guidance. There's nobody that you can ask uh, for how to proceed with this relationship. Um, so right off the bat, uh, the the mentor or the hierophant being in reverse, uh, that tells me not only do you not have the support uh, from others, you don't have anyone you can turn to for guidance in this situation, but it also makes me think that you need to be really careful about expecting conformity out of this partner of yours. Whether this is a romantic partner or a new friendship, um, whether this is a business relationship, whatever it is that you have going on with this new person, um, you need to make sure that you are not expecting them to conform for the sake of it. Um, um, perhaps there is uh, a new company, like a new business relationship that you have that you're not entirely um, sure how to handle. There's nobody that you can turn to. Perhaps um, it's it's a it's a it's a sticky thing because you want somebody to match up with your business desires, your your goal for the. Um, for the relationship, whatever it may be, but you don't want to put the pressure on them to be something or someone that they are not. So make sure that you're not looking for conformity from this other person and um, make sure that you are aware that while you can go to others for advice, ultimately the only person who can know this situation truly is you and the other person who's involved in it. Um, so outside parties are not going to be the help that you may feel like you need. Let's get some further clarification from the Poesis Oracle. Um, I would like to know more about this relationship. What about it makes it so new to our readers? What a, Or to our um, querents, I should say. Okay body. Okay, so there's a physical aspect to this relationship. So that narrows it down to me. So most of y'all are dealing with a romantic slash sexual relationship uh, that is new. Some of you may be in, uh, this could, another way to interpret this could be that you have a new gym partner. <laughs> um, this could be a situation where you have a new gym partner and neither of you really know what you're doing. It's kind of a situation of blind leading the blind, or they are trying to mentor you in the ways of working out, um, but you are not heeding their advice. That could be a situation, um, but it, it makes me think mostly that perhaps um, you are not ready for the sexual aspects of this relationship uh, that might be part of it. Uh, perhaps you're not ready even for the kissing. Maybe you're not ready for the physical intimacy that comes with this new relationship. Um, so, so something here with the body is not aligned properly for this to flourish. Um, so let's get some additional advice from the uh, Herbal Astrology Oracle. Um, what can Pile 3 do to uh, bring alignment into this relationship to um, to properly, uh, like, in pile number three does not have anyone that they can turn to for this. They don't have somebody who's going to be able to give them a good, good advice. So what can they do to fix this relationship before it becomes bad? What can they do to make this relationship as beneficial as possible for as long as possible? Or what can they do to get out of it if that's what they need to do? Uh, what, whatever that advice may be. What advice does spirit have for pile number three for this relational situation that they find themselves in? Oh, oh, we got two cards here. Okay. Um, did not mean to draw two, but I guess we needed both of them. So we get uh, lavender, which is the weaver, and we get nettle, which is action. Um, so these two kind of speak to different different light levels there's a need for planning and there's a need for action so i'm getting here that you and your partner uh needs to be on the same page with regards to what the relationship is going to look like as it develops um right now 
there is perhaps some accidental or even purposeful manipulation that's happening on one or both of your parts um, in order to I, I'm getting I'm getting the vibe here that y'all have been putting this new relationship pressure on each other to be a certain way and maybe you're accidentally or on purpose conforming to that in the hopes of keeping it as it is um, but you need to be honest and true to yourself and um, planning needs to be something that's communicated not just something that's kept inside uh, so definitely make sure that um, whatever future that you are weaving together with this person, that it's one that y'all are on the same page for. Uh, don't try to make it fit if it's not going to fit. And then action. If it's not going to fit, um, you need to remove yourself from this, this uh, situation altogether. Um, if you and the other person don't have the same goals for the future, then it might not be worth pursuing the more physical sides of this relationship that you're not really ready for it might be a situation where um, maybe y'all should just be friends first and try to do some stuff together like that sounds really silly but spend some time before you get intimate um before like especially especially if y'all don't want to have this conversation yet about what the future holds if it is too early like i don't know how long i don't know how new this new relationship is it could be new as in a couple months it could be new as in a couple days so um Make sure that if you're not in a position to have such a deep conversation yet, that y'all are doing things together that can make sure that you're getting on the same page through activity. So um, racquetball, rock climbing, hiking, um, coloring and painting together. That could be, but like whatever it is, do things together. Don't just go watch movies. Don't just go eat dinner. Don't participate in passive activities with this other person. You need to be taking action with them. You need to be doing things with them. And that's how you're going to be able uh, to, to um, find yourself more comfortable with the things that uh, are required of a intimate relation of an intimate relationship that doesn't necessarily mean that playing mini golf with this person is going to make it okay for y'all to bone but it what I'm saying is that if you can spend time physically in their presence getting comfortable than the verbal intimacy uh, the physical intimacy is going to be easier because your bodies will have spent time being casual with one another and that's super important take some of the weight off of the situation for now um, and then when it's time to have that conversation about what the future looks like do y'all want to shape it together y'all will have seen a more honest version of the camera cut me off but basically what i was saying was that when y'all uh, spend that casual time together and get comfortable with one another without the weight of expectation. It makes it easier to trust what the other person is saying when it comes time for that intimacy and those deep conversations that are necessary to shape the future that y'all might want to have together. This applies for uh, any kind of relationship, whether it's a business partner, whether it's a gym buddy, whether it is a coworker. Um, like you need to make sure that if you want to be closer to this other person, like if you want to pursue friendship, if you want to pursue business opportunities with them, y'all need to be doing things actively together in order to build up that trust that makes intimacy so so easy when the time comes. And then whatever future y'all are shaping together, whether it's a romantic one, whether it's a financial one, or whether it's uh, pumping, pumping iron to get them gains, uh, you're going to have a much easier time um, shaping that future together given the the actions y'all have taken by one another's side. So let's go through the cards very carefully to break down why I got this interpretation and perhaps I'll say something that'll give you some other message uh, that you'll be able to latch on to. Uh, so we've got the full card here. This is definitely about new beginnings. This is about starting a journey, not being properly prepared for it, but it's an important beginning to make anyways. And quite frankly, if you waited until the timing was right, you'd never get going. So the Two of Cups tells me relationships. It tells me new relationships, whether it's romantic uh, or platonic in nature. You and something or someone else, and I'm inclined to think it's someone else, are joining together for the first time. Then we got the Hierophant or the Mentor in reverse, indicating that you do not have outside support that you can ask questions of 
and indicating that there is a threat of expectation of conformity of both parties to the will of the other. Um, we then drew the body card, uh, which tells me that there is a type of physical intimacy that's happening here that is necessary or that is being blocked quite, in this case it was about blockage, so there's a blockage with physical intimacy, um, so that made me think of gym partners, but it also makes me think of sexual relations. Uh, it could also be um, that your relationship with your body needs to be reassessed, that's something that just came up as well. Um, then we get lavender, which is weaver, um, as in like shaping your home and the world around you, weaving that web uh, of your own future and your own stability. Um, and then we get nettle, which is about action, defense, um, but also about being proactive, having your defenses ready beforehand. Um, and in this case, I took that to mean uh, that y'all need to take these actions together um, in order to truly know one another. So pursuing active activities to do rather than passively spending time together. Um, if there were any other messages that you got from my little uh, babbling, please leave a comment down below letting me know whether or not this resonated with you and what uh, additional messages you may have received. If you feel like this reading was not quite enough, feel free to listen to the other readings in this video. Um, hopefully there's something for you somewhere. Um, and if not, then thank you so much for listening this far anyways. Um, I hope in the future to make videos that, that do resonate with you if this one didn't. Um, but thank you so much for listening, for uh, giving me your time in any way. Uh, I really hope that this was helpful. Mwah. Bye. I love you.